Hello and welcome back to the wisdomfactory.net and this time in English. As you see, I was already stuttering because I do so much in German lately that I forget about English, unfortunately. But today I have the occasion to practice a little bit English and I have a guest, Alia Orami, here with me. And I know her for a long time, not in person, but in, in all the time we, we, we turn around each other in, in, on the internet. I think we met about three, four years ago online at the Integral Conference. And you showed up in many of these um, uh, sessions, but also in the breaks, in the breakout rooms and so on. So I, I'm very familiar with your face. And then lately I saw her in another course I was doing. It's quite a special course. And I think we will be talking about that too. But before we go into these exciting topics, I want to ask you, Alia, can you tell us a little bit about you and how come that, for instance, you came to the integral conferences several times, the online ones? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I consider myself in the integral subculture, um, starting around 2006. Um, I had read uh, one or two books by Ken Wilber years before, but I didn't know there was a movement associated. And actually, I didn't come in through Ken Wilber. I'm Strangely enough, I came through spiral dynamics. Ah. Usually it's the other way around. People yeah. get to spiral dynamics through Ken Wilber, but I came the other way around. Mm -hmm. A friend handed me the spiral dynamics book and said, I think you would find this very interesting and valuable. So I did. And then um, one thing led to another. I can't remember. I discovered uh, integral um group on a an online community uh, platform that was at that point called Zods. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that. Yeah, and th then it was named um, uh, I don't know, it was bought by the Gaia company anyway. So it, it went through several uh, iterations. But anyway, I found the integral folks there. And from there, I got into the subculture. So I went to my first uh, integral theory conference in 2010. And then I went in 2013 and 2015 mm -hmm. and met lots of interesting people. And that it, it felt as if I found my tribe. Mm -hmm. Probably I saw you in these conferences because me and my sitting lying down on the sofa all night and we're watching the live transmissions from the conference ah, ah, yeah <laughs> and then and then i've been to the uh, a couple of the integral european conferences as well mm -hmm. i didn't meet you there so uh, in 16 i was last there in 16 in 18 mark was already so ill that we couldn't travel so we might have just missed her well, I'm sure I saw you there because I seem to have seen you uh, around for, for all these years and, and admired the work that that you were doing. It's like, oh, wow, another elder who is not sitting in a rocking chair. <laughs> what would we do in a rocking chair? <laughs> OK, so we have a similar history, let's say. And we were into integral theory and uh, spiral dynamics. I find it very useful too. And um, I afterwards, I went to, in 2019, I went to South Africa to the conference. Uh, mm -hmm. And there they are very much also into spiral dynam dynamics. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. It was very interesting. But now we met in a different course and I saw Sean in his uh, presentation in uh, the last conference online uh, in May, and it was something about UFOs. And I said, oops, do integral people now open to these things? And then he, he talked about something and it was not really about UFOs. 
in the in his uh, in his session and i said mm, what is that but then i realized that in his um workshop he did say something and then he did offer the course and i said oh i'm interesting in that interested in that because you know i feel that th this topic is like a bunch of other it's just a taboo and it's ridiculed and it's uh, put down but mm. you know, maybe there is some behind and that's some reason why it is ridiculed because it's the best way of of convincing people that uh, they shouldn't look into the topic so uh, yeah and then we did uh, you did this course and you are very active I'm just more listening at the the open door you know <laughs> but I see you very active in this so I would like you to tell me a little bit what has drawn you there and what what your interest is it it's not about tomorrow finding a new UFO and entering there and flying somewhere you know that's not it so what is it it's the way we use our consciousness it's I think the same reason that a lot of people are attracted to integral um and and for Sean as well I think um it's and he, He's into anomalous phenomena, not just UFOs, but a whole range of, of things that are outside um, the, the everyday con consciousness, yeah. Everyday mm -hmm. consciousness, everyday uh, narratives. And, and having done several courses with him now on this sort of stuff, I would regard it as training in in the use of integral epistemology that's really what's going on it's not really about the content at all it's how we approach it with our consciousness very much like what you were saying it's like oh well I, there might be something here maybe take a second look take a third look what's going on here um so he's really helping us um learn uh in in very i would say sophisticated ways of of holding things that other people dismiss <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly and he is not a spirit in this sense of uh, some tradition you have to learn this tradition and that's a way to happiness and i don't know what but he is sort of getting it from many angles and explaining mm -hmm answering your questions what i uh, personally find still very exciting i can be there only once a week you know because otherwise i had to go up at two o'clock in the night so that's not my my time of the day uh, but the 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 one time the week i'm attending i'm listening mainly because that's the only place i've found so far where you can talk about your experiences which seem to be a little bit different than normally mm -hmm. i mean at a certain point of my life i found out that there are other things and not only regular um, normality let's say and who do you talk about it you know uh -huh. and then i hear other people talking about their experience and i say oh what i have lived there maybe that's this and maybe it's this so it's opening the range of awareness and also of consciousness for me and finding other people sort of explaining to me what is happening to me and mm -hmm. and relieves me from not needing to believe that i'm crazy <laughs> you know yes so how is it for you you have done so many things what is your insights <laughs> Well, uh, fortunately, I've been on the fringe so long that I um, don't believe I'm crazy and I don't need to be um, um, I don't need to have other people to find other people who have similar experiences, but I'm enjoying comparing my experiences with others and being expanded. Uh, 
uh, thereby, and and I just enjoy the quality of of people who are uh, in attracted to these uh, courses. They're they're thinking people, they're heart people, they're uh, kind people, they're open people. Um, yeah. So for you, what is the main thing you have learned by Integral in the first place and then by doing these different ways mm -hmm. of seeing reality? I think that the main thing I've learned from integral in the in the first place, uh, if I can try to summarize it all these years, is um, is the integrative approach. Um, to me, Ken Wilber's cosmic essence is uh, embracing, and he's he's done that for a lot of different and schools of thought and ideas and perspectives and so on. Um, I've also, I think it's strengthened my view that there's value in everything. If we have a purpose that, that allows us to find the value in everything for our purpose. Um, and from from these courses in particular, it's 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 making me more a little bit more conscientious um, in um, I mean, I already was very conscientious about what I know, what I'm certain of, what I don't know, um, my my level of certainty about anything. but um, I do tend to jump to conclusions, and I do tend to think that. I'm right, and I do tend to think that sometimes uh, my model is the best. So uh, I've been uh, uh, kind of metaphorically slapped on the wrist a few times. Yeah, that's human. No? Almost everybody's doing that. And so uh, diving in more deeply, not just reading a book, but I'm, I'm about uh, Ken Wilber and the integral more than 20 years. So by the time I think it offers you or leads you to a certain humility, because you cannot just say now in our case, Putin is a, a Satan or something. You can't, because right. you know that there are many, many perspectives and you can't just um, prioritize absolutely one perspective. That's what we learn there, that there are many perspectives. And even the the four quadrants, you know, and the the um, the eight zones, let's say, the, in in uh -huh. every quadrant there are two perspectives. Still, this is an eye opener, because mm -hmm. so you can understand what you are leaving out, where it way of looking at things is, and what you are missing. And so you are can be reminded, you know what, you are missing out something you need to also look from that side. And yes. this is really creating humility because you cannot be so certain anymore in knowing who is good and who is bad. That's just not, <laughs> and our time now is really crazy in this. That's only right or left or good and bad and whatever. And when you are really into integral, you cannot take this stand. That's just impossible, isn't it? Beautifully said, beautifully said. I think it, uh, I would summarize that by saying it helps us to avoid the polarities that exactly. we're, invited, we're invited into so, so much, um, but we don't, we don't go there. Yeah, we still go there, but we are aware that's not the way that we need to <laughs> include more. We can slip into that. Yeah, 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 we know yeah. better. Yeah. And then you are talking about spiral dynamics. For me, it, I mean, I think I learned it first by Ken Wilber. They were still together, Tom Beck and Ken Wilber, and they were integrating somehow. And it was mind blowing for me. 
Mm. So how was it for you to learn that? Well, it was very interesting. Um, the first part of the Spiral Dynamics book made a lot of sense to me. And the second part was like total gibberish. Um, but the first part of the book was, I describe it as encountering a language that I already knew, but didn't know that I knew, but I could immediately think in that language. And I did a whole lot of writing and I did a whole lot of spectrum creating. Here's the spectrum of this and the spectrum of that in terms of the, the stages of development. Um, and I'm still doing that uh, uh, to a, a large extent through my blog and a book uh, that I'm writing. And, um, and, and over the years, as I've reread the book, now the second half of the book also makes sense to me. <laughs> So I actually don't really remember the second half of the book. I, I did the course with Don Beck very early in 2000 something, and I still was not good in, in English. And his Texan dialect was really even more difficult for me. But in time, then I understood the levels of development that was the most important for me to be able to distinguish people by where they are at and where they are talking from. Also, it took me a long time to really understand it. I knew it theoretically, but still fell into the trap of not realizing that I cannot expect, when I was really very much in green, that other people would respond to me in the same way. If, mm. if they responded to me in a red way, then I was disappointed. And mm. afterwards I said, you should have known, you know, by theory, you know? And so slowly theory filled with, with life, let's say. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so for you, what was the, the main thing about spiral dynamics which excited you? Well, it's only one map of consciousness. Uh, I, I don't see it as describing people. I see it as describing consciousness. And it's only one map of, of many, um, but it's pretty, it seemed pretty fundamental. And uh, I've since learned a lot about worldviews. I'm right, that's what I'm writing about. Um, and I just like the, the depth and the comprehensiveness of it. it. It doesn't describe all of a person's consciousness but it certainly is extremely uh, useful. And at the same time, I get very annoyed when the experts in spiral dynamics or integral analyze current events from the point of view of the, of the spiral stages involved and they forget it's a map and they forget that there's a vast territory that doesn't get onto that map. So I'm not at all into using it as a framework for analyzing uh, current events. I think it's it's far too simplified. Oh yeah, that's, I agree. I still think it's a good help to understand where people are, from, uh, where ideas are coming from. And um, I, I still use it for analyzing, but not for saying this is like that. That's it. But I say, oh, probably they are coming from this, and that's why they think that, and so on. Yeah. You know, yes. and uh, also explaining to myself that certain people who are coming from a certain world worldview easily don't understand anybody else which who comes from a different worldview. Mm -hmm. And that makes it less emotional, the whole thing. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. I, I think it definitely promotes compassion. It promotes uh, understanding. It promotes tolerance. Um, in my book on worldviews, I've listed a dozen benefits of the concept of uh, having the concept of a worldview, um, which is really what we're talking about. And yes, um, 
the the potential of understanding that people are occupying uh, they have one predominant worldview and then they have a bunch of others that they're moving into or and and accumulating but the the notion is just so beneficial for communication for for uh, cooperation yes for yeah yeah and also with the virtual thing also to understand that worldviews inside of one person can change oh yes you know we think this is fixed when I, I was grown, my mother has said always, when you say A, you all also have to say B. And I also always said, no, why should I? Or she <laughs> said, or oh, one or the other. And I always say, why not both? You know, so intuitively, obviously, I had intuitive integral mindset already as a child. So not to, to, to fix something as, as truth and reality. We have yeah. the tendency as humans to want to know the absolute truth and the absolute reality without realizing that in a certain sense, everybody has their own reality. I mean, many are very close, but you cannot say this is true and this is wrong. This oh, is yeah. false. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like this. You can say that's probably more true and that's probably less true because of this and this and this and this, but you cannot say this is the fixed idea. And when we think about our own development, what we thought the right thing 20 or 30 years ago, and even two years ago, and now it has changed, hasn't it? And it has a reason why it has changed. It's not because we are, you know, volatile, but because we have more understanding of mm -hmm and more experience. Now we're coming back to, to where we started from. The mm -hmm. experience and the understanding together is opening the capacity for worldview, for changing worldviews, making it ever more, ah, well, it's more complex, that's it's true, but it's also more, huh? I would say understandable, but only for you, not necessarily for other people. Uh, I don't know how to characterize it, but it's more um, comprehensive, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I go through the factors involved in, in the maturation of worldviews. I think it's a maturational process. And um, the the... I also talk about the the things that change, and there are really uh, three primary things that change. One is the um, the complexity, as you mentioned. Another is the the scope of of caring and concern that changes as as world views mature. And right now I don't remember the third one um but it's it yeah there there are lots of benefits <laughs> to maturing you're muted now I'm sorry I said absolutely it's it's a lot to it and also the, the psychological growth you know in yourself which makes you more tolerant more mm -hmm. understanding more willing to collaboration and to bridge the gaps which you feel. Mm -hmm. So for us, integralists would be a lot to do in this world of today who has become so simple in dividing into good and bad and left and right and I'm right, you are wrong. Yeah. So yeah. what can we do? <laughs> it, it gives us a glimpse into the worldviews we've already mm -hmm. brought through. Mm -hmm. Um, and reflecting and, uh, and amplifying something you said a little while ago, I would say it's, to me, it's a wonder that we ever think we're communicating. The differences in consciousness are so great. And, and I can tell you the, the story of how I learned that in my life. Mm -hmm. When I was in my 20s, I had a friend who was an artist. And we were just 
comparing our experience of what we were looking at one time. And I said, well, I see colors and shapes, but the colors are really the most important thing for me. And he, he didn't quite say what colors, <laughs> but, but he did say that for him, what he noticed was lines and angles and intersections. Uh. I'm going, huh? That, I suppose if I thought about it, I could see that. But for him, it was the most important thing, what he was looking at. And I went, wow, it's a wonder we ever think we're communicating. Yeah, we have a sort of a convention of what words mean. But still, I mean, at the moment, the words got uh, upside down, you know, uh, uh, solidarity now means uh, staying apart from each other and things like that. That's uh, one thing. But the power of, of language is huge. And when we pretend or assume that the other person understands the same thing with the words you say, then you want to express that's normally not the case. And I think most misunderstandings and even wars come out of this because everybody means that I have said this and why didn't he hear or she? And then the other one says, no, you didn't say that, you know? I mean, you, you they understood it different. There's this black box where it goes in and then it gets mangled up and gets out there. What arrives there might be a completely different thing that, than what had. <laughs> have been issued there you know yeah and anyone who's who's into personal growth has probably had the experience that somebody or various friends are telling you something for a long time and you go yeah 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 um and then somebody says exactly the same thing but they say it in a little bit different words and you go oh my god is that what everybody's been saying all this time? Exactly, exactly. And we need this in our times of today, really, mm -hmm. really, really, to be more curious about what is being said, what is being done, instead of immediately, you know, and you are wrong and you need to be punished, something like that. Yeah, one of the things that I certainly learned from uh, the integral philosophy or approach is to ask, what do you mean? <laughs> ah. And still then, if even explained in the second word set, it might not be the same thing as what you intended to say that the other person is listening to. So this is one of the real insights and in which often I still not yet really obey to is to ask questions, to ask instead of pretending or assuming that I have understood what the other person said, ask, what do you mean exactly with that? What do you want me to do? Or what do you, you know? Uh, now, do you mean this or do you mean that? Here's my interpretation, but maybe you mean that. So, what, you know, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, I'm not, People I'm, tend not to be annoyed. Very, I'm not always very good at that. Uh, not me either. neither. Also, because normal people, uh, getting annoyed when you ask all the time, but I'd have told you, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, as an Enneagram one, I tend to be quite sure of my own interpretations. So uh, what, what type are you? A, a one. Ah, yeah. Then they know everything good and well. Yeah. Yes. Mm, that's uh, true. Mm. Yep. We know the best way to do everything. We're wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we, I'm a four, we know how not to do things. <laughs> that is another uh, map of consciousness that I do find very useful. I find it more, much more basic than a lot of other typologies. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. But I want to come back, you said before, and it came up now again, the map. It's a map. And many people, including me at the beginning, I thought it is, that's it, you know, this is, and then you exchanges for reality instead of realize it's only a tool. Mm -hmm. And I think even in integral community, there are 
enough people who still think this, that's it. That is the truth in itself, but it's not. I mean, it's actually in some way, it has not even content. It's only a set of, how can I say? Is it a set of rules? Maybe not, uh, but a set of hints, how you, how you can see the approaches. world, how you- Approaches maybe, yeah. What? what did you say? Approaches. Approaches, exactly. But it's not really explaining any content. Mm -hmm. You can apply it to content, to some oh, content. Oh, that's such a good point. You, yeah. That's such a good point, yes. And I'm getting ever more annoyed on people in integral community who are talking about theory all the time. And is it this little bit or this little bit or this? Or maybe it's this and this and this. And I always say it's like the famous question, how many angels can dance on a on a on a needle? No. So that's that's not, I don't think it's the sense of a map. A map is yes, it's a, a large thing and you can zoom in a little bit but at the end if you zoom in too much for instance on google maps if you zoom in so much you don't see anything anymore you know <laughs> well i think it's a phase and those of us who are yes are, yes. are interested in ideas and have a thinking patterns i mean i went through that me too me too phase for some years and then it, it got boring and i got more interested in applying it to uh to my life and and living it um, exactly but i i feel that phase was was useful but yeah the the people who who don't realize it as a map i would just turn the framework back and 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 say that's a first tier approach the yeah, right yeah. wrong it, it's the truth or it's not the truth yeah yeah um, so we, hardly surprising that most of the people interested in integral are actually still in the first tier worldview, but they're attracted to the ideas. So they're they're in a in a movement in a transition, but um, they're still not anywhere near embodying the entire worldview. As we certainly were. And even now, often I'm struggling with really embodying the, the integral worldview because you always fall back when certain situations, you fall back into green or orange, or I don't know what, you know? So we have, that's a development also there, you know, until you really, it has to do a little bit of age, but not necessarily, age is, might be helping, but um, it has to do with, all growing up processes mm -hmm. that you need to be open and and go ahead and I always think the for me the main thing of integral when you are then you have the capacity of seeing the good in the stages and all the good in the people or in the worldviews of the other worldviews as long as you can't see that as long as you have to bash I don't know, Biden or Putin or Trump or I don't know whom, then, I mean, you can say you, I, you don't like it, you find it wrong and everything, but if you need to be exclusively uh, hitting them, for instance, in politics, you know, this is, uh, then I, I don't think you, you have an integral worldview because you know, nobody is smart enough to be wrong all the time, as uh, Ken Wilber said. So everybody has something good, maybe more or less, but to completely denigrate uh, a person as they do now with Biden, at least here in, in Europe, you, uh, not Biden, with, with uh, Putin, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's not an integral virtue possible. That's just, um, I don't know. It seems to me like kindergarten in many ways, you know. This is the bad one, bah, 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 bah. and I'm good. Hey. <laughs> so there are still people, even well-known people in our subculture, who are in, involved in that. So, just like any any group, uh, it, it even the subculture has a lot of diversity in it. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's for me a little bit the, the guideline of, to, of understanding 
where I am at at the moment, if I'm still so annoyed and angry on somebody, then I think, oh, now you are not an integral. And if others are, I think, oh, maybe they are not at the moment. That doesn't mean that they are never, you know, but at the moment in this, um, let's say, line of development, they might not be. Anyway, already enough. I would like you now to tell me a little bit about the work you have done with Son. I'm very new in it. And so I would like to present it a little bit to the people who, when they hear UFO, oh, no. <laughs> and what has it to do with integral? So that we go a little bit more into this topic now. And I let you talk. I have talked already too much. <laughs> no, not too much. Oh, let's see. Well, I don't know that I have a whole lot to add to um, what I said. Uh, I've admired Sean's work uh, for a long time. I think he has the integrating impulse, um, as Ken Wilbur uh, does, always wanting to put things together and cross map and and find out how things fit together and uh, and what syn synthesis can be created. Um, so um, it didn't matter to me what the topic was, uh, really. I, I have no problem with UFOs as, as perfectly actually ordinary <laughs> for, for me in, in my life. Uh, and uh, so I, I didn't need to be, to have my mind opened uh, to, to any of the anomalous uh, phenomena that he's uh, focusing on. So I was more interested in, in how Sean would approach them and figured I could learn um, better ways of uh, talking about them, not that I need to talk about them very much. Um, and I was also interested in what people he would attract, and I was certainly uh, right about that, that he would attract a whole bunch of interesting people. Um, so in the year-long course that we just finished, excuse me, my nose is itching, um, it was uh, like 40 weeks, and there was a different topic every week. Uh, so we, we ranged all over the, the place, uh, from Bigfoot to, to fairies, to UFOs, to uh, um, telepathy, to you know, everything that's considered outside of the consensus reality. Um, and, and always, always, he was guiding us to, he, he was offering, to be more precise, he was offering us ways of using our consciousness in a much more sophisticated, open-minded way, uh, like, like the concepts of taking it seriously and holding it lightly at the same time, often paradoxical things, or what he calls ontological flooding, which is just assuming something is true and jumping in and experiencing it as if it were true, and at the same time being aware of the possibilities that it's only this true. Uh, and that there's a lot outside it, and that it's not the whole truth. Um, bracketing calls that. So, uh, so any number of um, methods like that that he's teaching us using the content, but it really wasn't about the content, at least not not for me. Does that? Yeah. Uh, 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 I, let's say, 
having been there only a short time, let's say, it, it sort of resonates with me. I haven't dug deep into it like you have. But what came to my mind now, this course, he is also calling subtle senses. And he's actually, I have the idea that at least it happened to me, that the subtle senses are trained in some way that I can perceive some things better now than I, I could before. And he's giving us all these exercises. I, I really am not very um, good in doing all these. There are so many, but I have done several and I, I see it that has changed something. So, uh, and um, when we want to take off the UFO thing, which as I have understood, can be a real phenomena, but it can also appear in a, in a different uh, uh, state of consciousness um, that uh, you might, like out of body experiences and these things that you might um, experience it without being really yourself there, but it's your mind, your consciousness is going there. That's what I've understood. And from my own experience, I have understood that there are things possible, which you wouldn't, in your real normal consciousness, it's just impossible to, to, mm -hmm. to experience this. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you're still, I mean, I'm still here. It's not that I'm, I'm gone somewhere, but I was somewhere, you know, <laughs> and, uh, it's a little bit of an enigma, these these things. And I, what I like with this course so far is that I get an orientation, yeah, in some way, an orientation to to the experience and also know what is possible and that you can train it if you want, mm -hmm. like everything else, you know. Maybe you train to say, hey, you, OFO, come here, I want to enter. That maybe not, but... <laughs> <laughs> who knows who knows i mean like so many uh, people that in the last session was somebody she said she attracted her 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 flat she needed a flat desperately and then took, it was here and mm -hmm. i have this experience with parking spots you know yeah. somebody says we shouldn't we shouldn't bother the um the helpers by so primitive things we should uh save our wishes for more important things than a parking spot, you know. But um, I don't think these things are a chance, just a chance that they happen by chance, you know, but they mm -hmm. are, that they are real when you are concentrating and wishing, asking for something that it comes when you in a certain, when you have a certain attitude, let's say, when you let it go also. They, oh, I need this. Da, 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 da. Nothing comes. You know that's also an experience. Yeah. And so for me, this course is uh, helping to develop these senses, let's say. And he is talking about three books. I have read a little bit only in two of them, but the mm -hmm. distinction of the bodies. In which body are you now? Where is your experience happening? It already helped me a bit. Because I thought, ah, okay, when I'm in a certain experience, I say, ah, that's what they meant. Ah, okay. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, to, to have a, a framework ready or a map ready when we encounter a certain territory, then we can go, oh, yeah, okay. Um, that's one way of, of growing and, and proceeding. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, giving orientation, no? like what a map should do, by the way. <laughs> GPS, where you don't know what's around the corner. No? I don't think that's the right way of getting oriented, but to have the whole thing and, you, and see the directions and see what, where, where you are actually on the, in the territory on the map, let's say, you know. Yeah. I would say we could recommend the work from Sean Espon Hagen, he's called, no? Sean. Ah, Sean. Yeah, I always say Sean because he's written Sean. 
I'm not so good at English. Yeah, Sean. It's Celtic, actually, and they, they <laughs> pronounce things very differently from what they're spelled. Oh, really? Uh huh. Yeah, and I oh, was we, surprised. Yeah. Quite I, would I definitely would recommend anything he does, and he's got this degree program now at the California Institute of Human Science, mm -hmm. and you can get master's degrees or PhD degrees related to uh, uh, things that are far out. <laughs> yeah, expanded reality. Yeah. yeah, expanded reality. That's a good term. That's a mm -hmm. really good term. Yeah. Yeah, Leah. Thank you. We meet next week in the in the session, and I'm very grateful that you came to talk about that with me because I don't think I ever spoke in any of my interviews on other conversations. It's not really an interview what I'm doing uh, about a topic like this. So I'm very grateful, and yeah. I don't feel yet. Uh, capable to talk about it myself and you are already expert in that <laughs> uh, I, I don't know about that but I, I do love to share what I know I have a blog called uh, exploring second and third tier dot blogspot dot com and that's where I write about integral things and spiral dynamics things um, so uh, I hope I, I write a lot about we spaces higher higher we spaces and that sort of mm -hmm. thing and i'm working on three books oh three are, <laughs> yeah it's a series mm -hmm. the first about the concept of worldviews uh with reference to maturational stage theories of worldviews and then the second one is my description of the 10 spiral dynamic stages of worldviews um with my, my own interpretations of those and then the third one is a description of how each stage or worldview expresses its sexuality mm. they used to be one book but uh, they got too too large and so now it's three books but they're cumulative um in in understanding and when will you have, uh, will they come out? Uh, that's the big question. <laughs> well, they're in different stages of readiness. I I would have hopes to get the first one out next year. And then the others are mostly written. So shortly after that, maybe. Okay. So I wish you good, good work. And how do you say in English, keep on the good work? Keep up the good work, yeah. Yeah, keep up. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it, and uh, this, I certainly wish the same for you. Keep keep up your uh, good work in the world. You're you're contributing so much. Um, we we are not in yet, you know. So <laughs> we have to do something. I think it has a reason why we are still here in these times. So uh we we need to find out exactly what it is what we need to do and then do it in many ways i probably should mention since it's might not be too obvious from the zoom that i'm actually 83 years old oh wow <laughs> and i don't color my hair um <laughs> i neither but mine has a different color <laughs> so uh so i do have a lot of experiences and i've had a lot of time to think about things a lot of time to explore things a lot of time to form conclusions and opinions very good yeah. and give it over to other people that's the most important thing you know that we don't keep this it's a reason why i do these uh, conversations publicly then because don't keep what you have learned for yourself but mm -hmm. give it over to others that's my my motto <laughs> That, that is such a service. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You know, I can't speak English anymore since Mark is gone, where we talked English every day and all the time. That was our common language. And since I'm alone, I, I don't practice enough. So sometimes mm. I stumble a little bit. I'm sorry. 
I appreciate very much that you came to talk with me and we oh, see you soon. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure to talk with you. Me too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.